Hey guys, it's Toby with Custom Performance and we're back with this LS3. Now, if you recall, we did this one a year ago for Airflow Research. It was a stock 6.2 or LS3 short block with their LS3 cylinder head and the camshaft's about 238 duration, so uh, got about 600 lift. Now, last year we did it with the factory LS3 intake and now we're going to test it with this GM single plane intake and with the Holly 950 carburetor. Uh, so let's see what it does. Like I said, this is a factory short block. So, hey guys, uh, Martin Custom Performance here. Uh, so here we are with this uh, Dyno Mule, the LS3 that's been through quite a bit of testing. We tried, if you recall, three different cams with uh, Airflow Research CNC ported LS3 heads. It's got a stock bottom end. Nothing's done to it. 6.2 liter. LS3 out of a Camaro. So now we have the carbureted intake with the carburetor on it and we'll see what it does to the power and torque curve. As you can see, the cam that we have in there now has pretty decent uh, idle vacuum even though it's a 238 duration. It's got 11.6 inches of vacuum at 900 RPM. Uh, the thing idles, starts up, uh, should be a fun little runner even with the carburetor. Let's see what it does. Now the timing curve, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, the timing curve is uh, exactly the same. We kept the exact same timing curve as the fuel injection just to keep things uh, pretty much apple to apple comparison. All right, here we go. Results. <clears throat> These are the two graphs that are laid over each other. The uh, pale green there, this is the stock LS3 intake. You can see it's got a lot more uh, bottom end uh, with the longer runner. That's, that's kind of expected right there. So right there we're looking at a difference of 485 foot-pounds of torque versus 419 foot-pounds of torque at 4400 RPM. That's a huge loss in power and torque uh, due to the shorter runner of the carbureted intake manifold. Our lambda targets are the same, so our air fuel ratio is the same as the uh, fuel injected engine. And like I said, the timing is also the same. We try to keep things uh, as equal as possible to have an apples to apples comparison. Now, going up through the RPM band, you can see at peak torque, the fuel injected engine made 600, oh I'm sorry, 524 uh, foot pounds of torque. With the carbureted engine, we're at 486. Uh, as it keeps going up in the RPM, you can see that it pretty much peaked out at the same number. Uh, so the fuel injected engine made 596 horsepower at 6700 RPM and our carbureted engine made 597 horsepower uh, so one more horsepower so we did make a little bit more horsepower here's the tabular data and uh, so yeah we peaked out 490 foot-pounds of torque at 5700 rpm so it came in later and 597 horsepower and it looks like it wants to keep going uh, maybe we'll do one more pull to 6800 and see see what kind of data we get. So let's try that real quick. Now our, our MSD uh, coil control is set to a rev limiter of 7000. So we'll probably hear the rev limiter go. 6800. All right, here we go.
yes it did indeed keep going it crossed and made more power okay so 493 foot-pounds of torque 605.9 horsepower but at 6800 rpm so now let's look at what we gained versus what we lost we gained that much right there on top because everybody's always so fixated on peak numbers but we lost our asses off under the curve and in the middle again you spend a lot more time over here than you do over here unless you have a 6500 torque converter or you plan on keeping it right here all the time 